Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is this one. It's a little box with a, a lid that you can open. And I thought this would be great for guys because there's no pink, no flowers and no bows. But it uses the Gangs All Mere stand set. So this is one that you can get free with a 45 pound order, 60 euros. The Gangs All Mere. And I love it, I think that's so cute. Obviously here in the UK, we're very well used to the meerkats. Compare the meerkat.com very used to those but I just thought it was a charming set and actually I have created my own cardstock or pattern cardstock by stamping all over the back so that's the first thing I'm going to do. This one was made with mint macaron and then this little bit down here is shaded spruce and it's stamped with mint macaron for the um, cactuses and the lizard? I don't think he's a lizard, is he a gecko? I don't know, he's done in shaded spruce slightly varying it this time round with um, soft sea foam which I haven't used for ages and then I'm going to stamp with that onto it and garden green as well so let me get a couple of blocks on the go uh, so. so I'm going to put my cactus on one actually that's too big I need a smaller one for my little creature salamander I don't know maybe so first things first, so this measures eight by ten and a half inches, this card stuck. Oh, do I need to re-ink that? I think I do. Soft sea foam, shall we re-ink while I'm here? So I have a dedicated re-inker um, bone folder. It's a plastic one. So all you do is you dot your ink on, your re-inker, and apparently onto your grid paper too smush it around and then use a baby wipe to clean up and get that blob off there okay so we should be good to go actually that's not i've made it earlier. right let's try that again so lovely so i'm just going to randomly stamp these all over the place going off my cardstock just anywhere that I fancy. Like that. So that's that one done. And then my garden green for this little chappy. And he's gonna fill in the gaps. He's so cute. This is possibly another one that needed a re-ink, but that's okay. I love doing this kind of stamping. There's no right or wrong to it. It's just, you know, whatever you fancy doing. Seem to have a gap there. There we go. So they're done. And then while I've got my inks and everything on the go, I've got two panels for the front. Um, this one measures two and seven eighths by two and one eight. And this is two and three quarters by two inches, which is pretty much perfect size for that gang of meerkats. So what I'm going to do, so I gave this tip recently. This is way too big a block, but when you line it up, you want to be able to easily see all the way around your stamp. Very easily all the way around. So that you know exactly where you're stamping, particularly as this is exactly the right size. Okay, so I've got soft suede ink here. And I need to look straight down on it to know that I, I'm on it. And hopefully, I just, I think the ring light's gonna catch everywhere. But hopefully you can see that I can see easily all the way around the rubber stamp to know that that's fitting on my piece of white cardstock and lifting it up. There you go, you see they fit just nicely. Okay. While the ink's wet, Wink of Stella, because you know, glittery meerkats, why not? You could use an aqua painter. Mine are on the other side of the room. I use my aqua painters actually to seal envelopes. Um, 
I send lots of stuff out to my team each month and they go in our envelopes and I don't want to spend hours licking and sticking so I use an aqua painter so they're all over the other side of the room right now but that's just cute that's given them a little bit of colour on their bodies right and I might as well snail this on while I'm here Tummy's very gurgly. Right, so let's put this box together now. I don't know why I've just turned it over. Okay, so I gave you the measurements in the beginning, at least I hope I did. 8 by 10 and a half, 10 by 27 centimetres. And on the long side, score it at 2, 5, 7, and 10 inches, which in metric is 5, 12 and a half, 17 and a half and 25. And then on the short side, um, or you need to turn your cardstock. So you, so you can see my, you can see it actually on these little gecko salamander creatures. You need to turn those to the right hand side and score it at two inches, five inches and seven inches because that's going to be the closure of your box and these are going to be the right way up. So in metric, that's five, 12 and a half, and 17 and a half. And actually, I don't think I gave you the finished dimensions. Three by three by two inches, this box. Oops. Which is seven and a half by seven and a half by five centimetres. My panels, I'm going to read those out as I fold. The green panel is two and seven eighths by two and one eighth. And the white is two and three quarters by two. And in metric, 7.3 by 5.3 and 7 by 5. And it's all on my blog. If you paused me to, re to write it all down, you don't need to. Okay, so I'm going to start at the bottom. So I've got a thin panel, wide, wide, wide. So thin is top, wide is bottom. So you've got rectangles and squares. Cut straight on the rectangle and wedge your squares. That's always my rule of thumb. Straight rectangles, wedge squares. And then take out the little one. Okay, now we need to keep some parts. So with this thin part, whichever side it is, You've got one, two, three, four panels there. You need to get rid of all four of those. So that's the first thing to do. You can be brave with a pair of scissors if you want, or you can use a trimmer. I'm reasonably brave with a pair of scissors. And I'm doing the same as before. I've wedged into that square. So that's that whole panel gone. And remember, as I said before, cut straight down the rectangles, wedge into your squares. And while we're here, take that bit out. So straight down the rectangle, wedge your squares, and just chop. Okay, final little bits to do. Round your corners at the top, because this is the part that's going to tuck away. So round those, and that's going to tuck into this panel at the back. So I just want to give it a little handy thumb holder. So I've got any round circle punch, and I'm just taking a little piece off, very small amount. Oh, that just landed on my face. And now we can start putting it together. So, have some tear and tape there. corner round was sat on my paper piercer so then. That's the back, so fold in two sides and the back, and there's some more tear and tape here. If you're putting something heavy inside, put more glue on. Mine's currently empty. Okay, and then close it up, 
and that should fit in just nicely and then when you come to open it that little thumb holder just there will help you so you can open it up easily and then ribbon i i don't have a mint macaron or a garden green ribbon i have got whisper white because that's going to be in the background with this one and actually i think that might work but i might do another lane swerve and I think, and I wonder if that might be too thick. We'll have a try with this one. No, I think that's going to be okay, actually. So this is jute ribbon, braided. Oh no, it's ba braided burlap trim, but it is 100% jute. Mm. And then I've just got to get my gang of meerkats on. So I'm going to use dimensionals in all four corners. And that means it will sit over the top of the twine. love that that is so much fun my boys would be very happy if i gave them a gift in those my husband would too i hope you like them anyway thank you ever so much for joining me hope to speak to you very soon bye